Hey watch friends, as promised in my recent Zello's Hammerhead 3 video, today we're going to take a deep dive look between the Hammerhead 2 and the Hammerhead 3. We're going to check out all the changes I could detect. I might not catch them all, but I did notice a heck of a lot of differences between these. So before we get into that, I wanted to go ahead and briefly highlight on a recap. So if you saw the Hammerhead 2 video a while back, I talked about some of the differences with the Hammerhead 1, the dial, the handsets, um, the, uh, the uh, indexes. The main things, though, were the case, where this was a little bit, a uh, little bit thinner uh, on the original one for uh, for the case, as well as the dome. So that had a little thinner there and a little higher there uh, to be about the same overall thickness. So there's some sweeping changes. I mentioned at the end of that video that to me, I thought my ideal might be kind of a mashup between the original Hammerhead and the Hammerhead Two, and that's kind of what we got with this Hammerhead Three. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and start looking at some of the things that you might readily notice, as well as some of the things that you might not pick up on at first uh, first impression or first appearance here. So right off the bat, you probably notice that these have very different for the overall handset, as well as the markers between these two. The Hammerhead 3 was really going for a more simplistic handset. This was a little more stylized on the Hammerhead 2. The Hammerhead 3, as you can see, it's a little wider. It's a little bolder at all markers, including the individual batons. So the baton style is fairly similar, but wider uh, on the Hammerhead 3. The 3, uh, three 9, and 12 here uh, are going to be significantly larger. And then at the hands, you can see much wider application of loom. So they're broader, uh, broader hands, but most importantly, it's broader application of loom on those hands. This additionally does have a dual loom hands here. Uh, so we can uh, take a look at the, uh, the loom shot there. So looking at those markers, we already talked about in detail, uh, the markers as far as the overall style. So a lot of changes on those. The dial width, that's one that you might not notice right off the bat, but that to me, it very much appears that because this one has a raised outer perimeter and it has a cut down, so uh, kind of a chamfer cut, this appears to have a wider dial, so the actual colored surface area of that is wider. It does appear a little more bold uh, on that with that simplistic appearance. The red, I'm sure, helps and attributes to that, uh, contributes to that rather as well, but that does appear to be a change between these two. The logos. You might have noticed here, this one, of course, it's covered up at the moment, but this one does have an applied logo to that, whereas this uh, this one does have a printed logo, and this is a loomed printed logo, so that's a big change there. The dial text, if you can see down at the bottom there, the dial text is actually completely changed. This one had dual uh, text colors here, so you got white and red on this particular color, and then this one is both white. The uh, change as well as the font size and the overall font is slightly different. The font style I think is pretty similar between uh, the two overall uh, but that is a change there in the overall aesthetic. As we just talked about a moment ago the chapter ring that's a big difference between these. This one now has a flat loomed chapter ring so that just goes around and that is truly what I would call a chapter ring. This is a raised chapter ring with a step that almost functions kind of like a rehot. It's not a slope on the outer perimeter so I would just call it a raised chapter ring with a step down lip but a very different appearance between those. The HH2, in my opinion, has a little more depth in that regard, but this does give a little bit of a cleaner appearance and make it a little more legible, which is what the Hammerhead 3 was going for. Now looking down at the six o'clock position, you might have noticed both do still have the date window. However, check out on the Hammerhead 3, you can see this one has a framed square date window. And when I say frame, it's just a, be a bevel cut frame, so it doesn't actually have an added or applied frame for that, but it is kind of framed into the cut. This one, and I did compare to non-meteorite versions too, and it's the same whether it's bronze or steel, but this one has kind of an octagon shape to that around there. So that's a change in just the cut for the, uh, the date window between the two. Of course, one of the huge differences between these is going to be the uh, water resistant. So when we were looking at the font, you might have noticed this one has 1,000 meters of water resistance, whereas this one has 300 meters of water resistance. So a huge change between uh, those two. The bezel inserts. If you look here, this one, of course, is a meteorite, but again, it's the same pattern for all of them. This one is uh, going to see, or going to be, as you see, have individual markers for the first 15 minutes, whereas this has all the way around. So it has a special pattern for the 15 minutes, and then it goes to individual marks as you go around the rest. So that is a change there. Additionally, the font itself is a little more bold, and that is for uh, pumping up that loom as occurred through, uh, through all of this. So that's definitely a noticeable difference there. The case thickness. 
Case thickness is pretty dramatic difference between these two. You're going to be looking at, I believe, around two millimeters uh, between these two in overall difference. Seeing them side by side, it's not as dramatic as you might think if you're just looking at the mid case. But if you look at the overall height between these two, it is a pretty considerable difference. A lot of that is attributable to the case back, though you can see the mid case is definitely slimmed down as well. So definitely a noticeable change between that. And while we're looking at the side here, you might have noticed, like the original Hammerhead, the Hammerhead 3 no longer has the helium escape valve. So original didn't, HH2 did, and now the new with being 300 meters does not have a helium escape valve on the side there. Looking at the case backs, at first blush, these case backs might appear to be the same. And in some respects, they are. They're a very similar scene to them. But look at the application between these two. It's completely different. I personally think the Hammerhead 3 is a huge improvement in this area. Not that I thought the HH2 was bad, but I love the aesthetic on this Hammerhead 3. So basically, same scene playing out, but you might be able to tell here, and we're getting a little bit of glare there, I apologize. But this Hammerhead 3, this now has additional texture, so you've got the bead blasting in there. It has the inner ring going around, and I've seen this on some other newer Zellos as well. And then with that, you've got that nice clean font going through there. I love the way for this being a screw down, the actual keys for that. I love the way that that is there instead of being an outer perimeter. Not only does it make it smoother, but I think it makes it so much more finished looking and attractive. Case back's not a huge thing, but it's something that I definitely like. Additionally, sharpness. This one didn't have bad sharpness at all, but I would say this one is even smoother. And then in the middle there, on the part we were just talking about, you might have noticed that is actually a polished uh, now. So instead of just being where this is still flat, it's kind of like a brushed for that. This, let's get that in an angle. You can see that is actually a mere polish. Has some fingerprints on it from me rubbing around there, but um, that uh, does give a different as far as the texture and appearance as well. Flipping over to the crown, the crown itself is an overall similar aesthetic, and you might at first glance think that they're the same, but there are some differences there as well. So sizing is going to be similar, but you notice right off the bat that Z is very different. This is more reminiscent, again, of the original Hammerhead. It doesn't have that outer circle around it, and the Z itself is a little larger. Both of these are still going to be loomed. Additionally, you might not have noticed, but this does actually have more uh, ridges or more gears or more cuts in. So this, you can see, has a little broader of the flat section there, whereas this is a little more pointed. I haven't found either to make a huge difference because it's such an easy crown to grab, but it is something that is a difference to be aware of between those, uh, those two versions. The bracelet. So I'll pop up a picture on, uh, on the screen. The bracelet between the stainless steel version, because there isn't one for the bronze on this particular one, the stainless steel uh, bracelet on this, the Hammerhead 3 versus the Hammerhead 2, is a significant difference as far as the change in the overall style. It went from female links to uh, male end links for this, but the biggest thing is the overall aesthetic. While we're talking about the bracelet, the clasp, this was a huge difference for that as well. So you now have still double pusher style, but this one does have a built-in toolless micro adjust into that. Really an excellent upgrade there. I love this on all the other Zellos that I've had this on. And this new, this is the newest style for this, uh, this clasp where it's a full brush and it's very smooth. So if you've had any prior ones like this, this is not the one with the dual finish where it has the sharper edges to it. So that's a nice change there. And then finally, let's talk about the movement. So the original, uh, or I should say the Hammerhead 2 rather, was available with either the NH35 or an ETA movement. This one is only available with the NH35. So I hope this has been helpful for you, whether you own a Hammerhead 2 presently or you're just curious about what's going on with the Hammerhead 3 and what uh, some of the iterative improvements were for that. I do think overall opinions are going to be mixed between these. I personally probably prefer the dial aesthetic and the handset aesthetic of the Hammerhead 2. I like the stylized look, especially on this meteorite. This is my favorite colorway for this. I think it just looks fantastic. I love that raised chapter ring. That being said, this one is fantastic as well. So I really, if I hadn't ever had this, I would love this piece more than, uh, than I do as far as drawing comparisons between the two. But that's not to say that I don't love this piece because I still do. They're just very different styles of the two. Overall, I do think in terms of refinement, additional uh, options, the micro adjust clasp, those kind of things, I think the Hammerhead 3 is unquestionably an improvement. And I think this is a fantastic buy. As I said in the Hammerhead 3 review, definitely on my recommend list if you like uh, Zealous watches, if you uh, don't mind chunky watches, I think it's absolutely worth your money. So I hope this has been helpful for you. If you 
you did enjoy this video and you could please hit that like button, that's appreciated. But most importantly, it really helps the channel if you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And then finally, if you're looking for this strap or anything else, I will have Amazon affiliate links in the description. That helps me out. I get a small commission and it doesn't cost you anything. Finally, if you want to find me on another medium, you can find me on Instagram. Thanks for watching.